So with that, why don't we have a look inside? Let's do it. So we'll start here on the back end of the crew module. This is the habitation area. Again, an area that is built and designed for up to four astronauts to uh, live and work while on the surface of the moon. Here they'll, they'll eat, they'll sleep, they'll drink, and they'll prepare for their EVAs. In this mock-up, we have volumetric representations of a lot of our different systems. Our Paragon uh, life support system, you can see this volumetric representation can be moved around as we uh, decide on the final placement for these systems in our architecture. It's well lit. Uh, Bionetics provides our, the lighting for the crew module. And then just forward of the habitation area is the workstations for, for flying the vehicle. So let's go ahead and take a look and see what the, the flight stations look like. So let's talk a little bit about how we are going to fly the lunar landing in this vehicle. As you can see, we've got the controls and displays centered around the window field of view so the crew can maintain optimal situational awareness there. We're going to lower the vehicle down into a 100 kilometer circular orbit around the moon. When we're ready to start the landing, we will execute a burn over the north pole of the moon for about 10 seconds. That will uh, lower our orbit to about 15 kilometers. Once we start to approach the south pole, we'll begin a continuous braking burn that will last for about nine minutes. And then uh, we'll start into the landing phase, which Brew will tell you about. That landing phase begins at the end of our braking burn, at which point the vehicle will begin to pitch over. When the vehicle pitches over, the landing zone will come into the field of view through the uh, out the window views. And this will be approximately five kilometers from the landing zone at that point. And from there on in, all the way through touchdown, we fully expect the crew will have an unobstructed view of the landing zone, uh, as I say, through touchdown. Uh, there will be a point in time as we get close to the landing zone where the, the landing zone disappears below the field of view of the windows, but at that point the crew will maintain a complete visual on the landing zone through a state-of-the-art sensor suite that will allow it to persist through the harsh lunar environment of dust and, uh, and uh, sun glare. So as we come down towards the final landing, the automation will allow the crew to just maintain situational awareness on the landing site and any kind of obstructions or slope issues and then they can make minor redesignations of the landing site, allowing the vehicle to fly there. Or if they're uh, more comfortable, they'll be able to take manual control and actually fly the translation and descent uh, profile manually down to the surface. So, Brew, am I going to get this landing? Mash, I think you have to have done it before to do it again. So, this, this one's all mine. Oh. <laughs>